Gareth, good morning. How are you? Good morning, Rob. Yeah, I'm very well. Are you? Yes, yes. All things considered, thank you. Yes. It's, uh, we're, ha we're having a bit of an Indian summer at the moment, so uh, taking advantage of that. So I'm sat here in a t-shirt and you're clearly at work in your in your work, work attire. So um, firstly, yeah, firstly, thank you very much indeed for taking part in this. Um, if, if, I, I hope it will be an absolute benefit um, to, to the people of the Aston School that you went to. So can we start by, can you just share with us who you are and what it is you do, please? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm Gareth Day, um, left the Aston in 1999. Um, I started then a career in law, which we'll, we'll talk about. Um, the outcome now is that 18 years on as a career in law, I work for a, a solicitor's firm in Retford, Jones & Co. Um, I specialise in an area called private client, which involves advising clients about inheritance tax, tax advice generally. I deal with wills, probate, um, lasting power of attorney, cover various aspects of mental capacity and trust. So quite a broad area of work and quite a specialist, but something that I really enjoy and I'm absolutely passionate about. Um, I certainly don't wake up in the morning and, and fear going to work. I love my job. Um, and it, it becomes very, um, very rewarding. Great, thank you. That, that's, that's a lovely thing to hear. Um, I, I, I do meet a lot of people uh, and in the work that I do sometimes, um, we get to the point where they recognise they don't actually love what they do, they kind of do it and that they need to change or whatever. But that, that's really a great thing to hear because people going forward, I think it's really important that they understand that if they can do something they love and get somebody to pay them to do it, they're on to a winner in life. Absolutely. So thank you. Um, so what would be your fondest memory of the Aston School then? I think the fond memory, certainly I was very into sports and I'd say that there's um, vast provision there for sports, certainly when I was there, broad range from sort of tennis and hockey in the summer through to uh, sort of rugby, football over the winter season. But we'd also uh, be able to take advantage of um, the vast grounds for cross country big into running really enjoyed that which would take us over the rugby field to the cricket pitch and round but other little things like we had um, you know great um, great teachers throughout great role models and certainly with the PE department um, Leslie Bryant for example she uh, she'd been involved with Commonwealth Games etc and she'd teach us things like shot put and javelin and how to sort of long jump correctly and, and various things like that so yeah great memories of that but Certainly, I would say you know, great role models, great teachers there, and certainly ones that I can recall now, and um, which really help through uh, through through learning and education. Absolutely. Okay, so thank you. That's that's little, again again great. Yeah. So um, in sport, um, I, I believe that there's a, there's a lot you can learn in life from sport and things like transferable skills. So. Were there anything, that, or was there anything at the time you learned that you've carried forward or you've adapted in, in your life that you've learned from sport? Well, certainly I continue a lot with sport. I tend to use sport now as sort of an outlet for sort of stress and unwinding and sort of escaping work, still run a lot, play football a lot. But I think really from secondary school level, it was about team building and sort of the social aspect as well. And probably I was a little reserved and shy, certainly starting secondary school. And so it gave you the perfect opportunity to engage with with the year group uh, into house games or you know we were playing matches against other schools so i think really from a confidence point of view and sort of team building etc yes certainly um i encourage sport still with with my children and feel that it, you know it's a great uh, great thing to be involved with and dare i say it slightly competitive edge that i have so uh, i think certainly the competitive edge then uh, and shows in, in other areas that I get involved with. Um, I might be told at times I'm slightly too competitive, but I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. No, I'm not competitive. No, absolutely. A great message there, Gareth, also is uh, sort of wearing the, the, the shoes of, of the school leader. Is, um, they're, they're kind of faced with these applications and tell us how you fit this particular part of the job role and that part of the job role. So it's important to reflect on all their experiences at school and sports and other activities that they took part in, they can draw on those. And empl employers are, are understanding of that. Um, so it's not to be daunted yeah. by the fact that they, they 
just leaving school. So brilliant again, thank you. So um, what were your thoughts when you were leaving school going into this horrible world of work? It's not horrible, I'm just joking. Um, slightly daunting. Um, I think it's fair to say that whilst I thoroughly enjoyed um, secondary school and my time at De Aston, I probably was sort of the average student, if you like. I wasn't sort of a really high achiever. I sort of sat in middle set and um, probably struggled a little academically and felt there's probably a lot of pressure on what to do next. Um, at that time, there was a lot of emphasis on university and um, obviously important to uh, to move forward with from GCSEs to A-levels. I actually opted not to do my A-levels at De Aston, which I probably regret now actually, but um, I think there's a lot of emphasis on university and that was something that I was unsure about. And so that really led me to sort of look at um, alternative options, vocational routes, et cetera. And um, I think really it's just, an important message that whilst in a university is a great opportunity to uh, to further education i think it's also important to um really consider whether as a as a, as a person it's felt it's the right opportunity um, and i certainly felt it wasn't which probably raised concerns to my parents at the time a bit as to well why wouldn't you go to university but i felt strongly that i wanted to look at other options and that really led me to to where i am today Great. Uh, so, so thank you. So from what I'm taking from that is that, um, what you've just said, but also that uncertainty is perhaps it's very natural. It's OK to be uncertain. So but it's, it's not OK not to do anything about it. So there are more routes to, to life and career than, than the university. That's not me dismissing universities at all. So, so it's an equally um, uh, acceptable option. Um, so. so mm -hmm getting um getting to that point okay so there, there is uncertainty not to worry you've got great guidance at school you've got great role models you've got your parents to help you but but just be aware and and uh, that competitiveness clearly came out early you know that strong will um it's not not easy to go against yeah. one's parents <laughs> i guess okay so thank you very much for that um so in a kind of a linear fashion let's go and talk about your your first of all your first job application then other job applications that you may have had and then see if there's anything that we can draw out of there that we can learn from it yeah well when i when i left the aston to, to start a levels and um, if i said my first job application my first job application is a, a saturday lad in a, in a butcher's shop um which i thoroughly enjoyed one because i started to earn a bit of money um alongside studying for a levels but two, it again allowed me to sort of meet people, socialise, um, really sort of boosted my confidence, which I was struggling with. Um, and it just, I think, really set me up with some great transferable skills. You get to meet lots of people coming in, work with staff, just, or just I think, huge, huge um, value added by doing that. Um, then if we sort of skip, I sort of ran, ran um, the butcher's job um, as a part-time basis for two or three years actually um, which after my A-levels led me to sort of make a formal application to um, a solicitor's firm they were advertising for um, really sort of an apprenticeship route to become a legal executive and um, I'd done a little bit of work experience with a firm knew, knew a, a solicitor locally and um, was always quite intrigued as to his job um, I'm not gonna lie I was always impressed by the, the cars he had and that was sort of a little bit of uh, an influence there so I, I applied for this job I felt that perhaps I was a little bit ambitious but nevertheless felt that it'd be a good experience um, I clearly showed something when I went for the interview um, whether that was just my drive ambition perhaps competitive just being very keen there and and so I was very fortunate that out of the, the selection for for interview that I was chosen as the uh, the one appointed so just under the age of 18 I was then appointed to to join the firm um, on a, an apprenticeship basis so it's a very vocational route through what is now known as the Chartered Institute of Legal Executives and that really set me up and um, really enjoyed that and it um, from from day one just got stuck in and um, I think I just w was able to show what I was capable of and that just led to progression. Um, one thing I did do, however, is just keep the butcher's job running on for, for about a year. Just 
really enjoyed that. And so I'd finish work on a Friday and then be, be in the butchers on a Saturday and help out extra hours at uh, Christmas time, etc. But just because I really enjoyed that and um, I just felt because I'd learned a lot from that and it gave me a lot of confidence that, um, you know, it's a big thing actually to leave that position and break free. But uh, after a year, I decided that I needed to focus on obviously my career um, but certainly I'm um, still in, in contact with with the butcher shop where I worked and a great team of people there and yeah they've given me a lot of uh, a lot of confidence at the time and i um, really quite uh, cr proud to have been part of that. Thank you very much I mean I, I'm hearing there that so that particular employer and indeed so this is a common theme across a number of employers I know so they've recognized the importance of academic achievement and various things but what really counts is the person in front of them and how well they present themselves how interested they are um, you know if they show willing what's that expression then if you've got the will we'll show you the skill um, that they will take you on yeah and, and that they will train you um, so, so again um, that, that's great as well so um, I love the idea of keeping on the butcher's job um, <laughs> as well no I mean it makes perfect sense from a from a point of view of if you tried the law and you didn't like it and you had a fallback but nevertheless you also used it as a kind of a, a vehicle to develop your other skills which you now use in abundance i guess your yeah, yeah. so, so uh, again, again people um people watching this i hope they will take away from that that everything is an opportunity if you see it that way brilliant yeah. okay so um we're now living in kind of tough times um and I can only begin to imagine what it's like for somebody about to leave school or considering careers and how many people um, are in the job and the labour market beyond what was 12 months ago. So what kind of um, messages would you send to them uh, about living through tough times, Gary? Um, I mean, from experience, I can say that you know, there's um, several um, so experience I've had of sort of tough times and um, the message I would give is that yes it's tough at the time and um, we'll get through it but also um, I think what it does as well is it makes you stronger once you're out the other side as you look back and learn from it as an experience and say right I've experienced that it's a very tough opportunity uh, tough time and um, how you deal with that as a person um, but I think yeah certainly it just makes you stronger and builds up sort of experience um, and develops you as a person definitely okay Th thanks again because it's very easy to become gloomy about about what what's happening at the moment um i know it only too well from people i'm trying to get work from um but, but to be fair to them they've got lots and lots of things to manage other than what i offer brilliant okay so um finally um if, if you were to be able to give your younger self a message or, or some wisdom, what wisdom would you cast upon them? You know, what would you share? I think the important thing is to create opportunities, um, but also make you explore the opportunities, see what opportunities are out there. Um, I'm a big believer in getting out there, meeting people. There's some great people out there, great people that can help with career advice, advice generally, um, just support you in life. And, and I've been very fortunate in what, 18 years now as a career in law of meeting lots of fantastic people, whether they're clients, colleagues, um, absolutely fantastic. So I would say is get out there, create, look at the opportunities, look at creating opportunities. Um, and if it's a case of pursuing careers or, or, or anything else, really try and and open those doors because once the doors are open get your foot in and and just run with it really just go where it takes you because that's what i did um arguably punching above my weight with the opportunity that i had but i just really made the most of it and um, looked to show willing presentation was key and just making sure that as a person you sort of polite courteous and and just go over and above and 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 i think then what i found is that will just create opportunities um and, and go with it absolutely brilliant so, so it's about uh, being proactive and it's also about mm -hmm. taking responsibility um, for, for your own self if it's got to be it's up to me type thing okay gareth that's lovely thank you very much indeed um so, so that, that concludes the interview